Welcome to sports everybody. Our Davis Cup team working out at the National Tennis Center ahead of their Zone 3 tie next week in Trinidad. Charles Fisher stopped by this morning to see how things are coming along. First time captain Dentry Mortimer getting the players together a week ahead of the pivotal tie. A good way to build up team chemistry. The reason for getting to practice was to keep the guys in tip-top shape, you know, try to get them their confidence going into the tie because like the other Davis Cup, you have to be there a week this time. The Davis Cup starts on Monday, so it's just to get the guy confidence and getting them a feel for the ball. We're going to go and try work on when the guys is getting into a nice rhythm because, you know, it's very hard to get them strokes as most of them could play tennis and to get their confidence going. Back playing as the number one player, Marvin Roll. He likes the full week of preparedness. Just getting the good practice, see where we all are, at, where we at, you know, see how we're hitting the ball, and just, you know, to work together as a team, you know, that's the most important thing, work together as a team and, and support each other throughout the whole week and the week there as well. Rodney Carey Jr. will be playing in his second tie. I just kind of stay in tune, uh, get some small things together and a lot of points play, match play and try to get in a match groove and get ready. I feel pretty good. I think we have a solid team and we could do a good job and um, try to get out the group. This week's workout should be extra help for first time player Jody Turncrest to work out the butterflies. I feel pretty good about heading in. Got my head straight. Mm -hmm. What do you hope to accomplish this week in terms of the practice session? Uh, to work on things I need to work on so that I could carry it into the tournament. Mm -hmm. Philip Major, the fourth player on the team, was not at practice due to exams. We'll be hearing much more from our Davis Cuppers throughout the week. For ZNS Toll Sports, I'm Charles Fisher. All right, thanks a lot, Charles. Well, Sherman the Tank Williams said to step back in the ring June 28th in Macau, China. Tank will take on Chauncey the Hammer Welliver in a 12-round title bout. The Bahamian heads in with a record of 34 and 11 with 19 knockouts. Welliver, meantime, sports a record of 53 and 5 with 25 knockouts. You know, I'm feeling good. I don't know too much about uh, Villava. All I know is he's the current WBO. Asian Pacific and Chinese on champion and um, basically going to China to take those titles. I think I'm more Chinese than he is. So uh, come June 28th, we're going to have a rumble in Macau. Uh, you know, we've been having uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, pretty good and solid workout uh, sessions here. Uh, House of Champions uh, is definitely the home of all champions. Uh, many uh, current and former champions is trained at House of Champions. And I'm very comfortable here. And uh, this is uh, where we are preparing for warfare. And hopefully, after I take these titles, come back with me to Freeport and then go to Nassau, go to Bimini, and experience the whole 700 island bombs. We can do it the way Christopher Columbus did it. Well, Coach Steven Strong continuing to do his part in helping to get deserving student athletes off to school abroad. After a breakout season with the Antoine Rogers Timberwolves senior boys basketball team, Deshaun Dean will be taking his talents to Northern Oklahoma Junior College this fall. His father told me that, you know, he is committed to sending him to Antoine Rogers, and I said, listen, we're going to train him, and we've been working night and day on Deshaun's game, and so the coach just loves him. Is looking forward to, to for him coming down to Northern Oklahoma and playing. You know, he's already sent a, a regiment for him to get stronger. You know, and uh, working on his skills. So I, I'm, we're going to see some big things from Deshaun. I'm grateful to God for giving me this opportunity and giving me the athleticism and the ability to wow coaches. He entered into basketball at age 16, so it's just a testament to to God and you know his persistence that he is awarded the scholarship. We try to instill godly principles in Deshaun. He knows that that is the way to go. Outside of that, you really can't, you can't, you can't make it. Well, on Friday past, Ali Culmer and Linda Ford were inducted into the International Softball Federation's Hall of Fame at Government House. For Sports Minister Dr. Daniel Johnson, this was all a culmination of hard work and dedication, which the two put in while representing the country at the highest level. You can see from their record, um, they had the softball federations crown they went to the softball world games third place finish in santa clara california they went there and performed well at the world level the, even the people there and then said that this group of people were very special i think on that occasion you also had visits from the uh, leadership of the country 
who also realized how special the occasion was. So Lyndon would have flown to California to watch those games, and I think he would have been accompanied by the first Minister of Youth, Sports, and Culture. Well, following a successful Junior Nationals this past weekend, track and field fans have another exciting event to look forward to. On this weekend at the old Thomas A. Robinson Stadium, the annual Silver Lightning Track Classic will take place, and this year's meet has an added bonus. This meet will showcase some of the relay teams from really around the world that will be coming here to try and get a last qualifying time in this road to London. We'll have teams from St. Kitts, we'll have teams from Barbados, we'll have teams from Trinidad, we're expecting a team from the United States and even Jamaica. So we really encourage the Bahamians to come out, we encourage the foreign nationalities living here to come out because, um, you know, your, your country is still qu trying to qualify their athletes. Well, the Bahamas still awaiting word from the IAAF on whether or not its bid was successful to host the 2014 World Relay Track and Field Championships. While in town last week, IAAF Secretary General Esau Gabriel admitted that with under two years to go, it will be a short time to prepare. So moving forward, the window will be expanded in order to maximize the potential of the event. For an event like that, I would say in the future, the ideal would be three years in advance like our World Youth Championships, or our World Junior Championships, or our World Championships. Uh, and we're looking in the future to have it be a two-year event. Having said that, since we are in the uh, pioneering time, in the early times, we're looking to find a partner which would accept to have uh, to organize possibly two editions in a row, 2014, 2015, because then we can experiment. How does it fit within the world calendar, odd years? How does it fit uh, with regards to even years? And then what would be the best equation? Now with the possibility there for the Bahamas to host the first two World Relay Championships, B3A's President Mike Sands says the opportunities are endless in terms of sports tourism. The number of athletes that would be expected, eight, anywhere from 800 to 1,000. When you look at the, the press, it would be about 200 press and the I, IWF family. And you're talking about that alone being close to probably 1,500 direct participants, right? That does not take into consideration the other followers, family and friends, right? And so you're talking about sports tourism, you're talking about the development of track and field, you're talking about the vision for track and field. And so we're on the cusp of making some things happen. If you look at the World Championships now, that was started in 1983, the World Championship has become a very, very big event. Everyone looks forward to it on their calendar year. And the fact that the IWF is prepared to have whoever is selected to have it two years back to back, you know, augurs well for the development of track and field, and in particular for the Bahamas, if we are successful. And we have no reason to doubt that we will be successful because everyone is enthusiastic about it. And now, you know, we're looking for all hands to be on deck. And that will do it for sports.